All right, we move ahead to a man who may be having more fun on Twitter than anybody else on the planet right now. If he's not sharing funny fail videos, he's calling for big fights. So let's get an update from Gilbert Dorino Burns. Gilbert, good to see you, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Mike. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I know it's a, a difficult time in the world with coronavirus and everything, but how much fun are you having with Twitter and, and, and putting these videos out for the world to see? And... I'm, I'm going to tell you a story. To be very honest with you, I, I shared the, the first one. And I think I shared like three or four. And the first time that I, that I was sharing these type of videos, the, the mammy videos. And I got a ton of messages. Hey, please keep doing that. That was the first laugh that I gave today. And another guy, hey, that was the only laugh that I gave. Hey, you're making me so happy right now. I've been so hard. And like, I get a ton of messages with the guys like, Hey, that's the only no. That's the only reason that thing make me smile. That 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 was this tweet, and then I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna keep doing that. And then people were having fun. I was just, I just kept doing. It. I was having a lot of fun. I like, I don't, I don't get to a lot of memes, but this one specifically was making me, making me laugh so hard. I like that a lot. So how do you like? How do you find them? Are you just like scouring the internet looking for them, and then just posting? Like, how are you? How are you finding these videos? They have a, a page in Brazil they call, it's like O Caixão, it's kind of like the the translation of, of the coffee. And uh, and the guy was sending it to me every day, look at that one, look at this one. And I was just, and a lot of guys in Brazil, I guess the Brazilian community love those type of videos too. Everybody, as soon as I start posting, I think a lot of people start reading to it and a lot of people just start sending it to me. They send it and every, every time I would just, See a new one that I was posting, I was posting that until right now I kind of give a little break, but still I look at my Twitter, my Instagram, a lot of people are still sending that thing to me. And and it's funny, so I just I just kept posting. They're just the most ridiculous videos. I'm like thinking about them right now. They're just so ridiculous. Yeah. I'm waiting for like the end of them every time with the with the guys dancing and everything and the music yeah. playing in the background. You even got like other fighters in the UFC getting involved. Like you're getting tagged left and right with these videos. It's you're, you're 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 bringing the fighters together in a way during this uncertain time. Gilbert, that's something to be very proud of, right? Yeah, that was cool, bro. And a lot of fans like they just. And when they saw something on, on any any type of, uh, of social media, they tagging me. And sometimes I don't even saw it. Boom! I got three, four different tags on that thing. I say, "Oh shit! Okay, I got it." And then, and to really tune a lot of fighters too, they make it fun. Uh, it, it like I said, it's like it's cool. It's funny. It doesn't hurt nobody. And a lot of people laugh. So why not? I'm gonna keep doing it. I saw you gave Ben Askren the, the business yeah, the other day on, as well. Why, why did you decide to take that shot, if you don't mind me asking? Come on, bro. Like, freaking Ben Askren. He left the sport. I don't even fought the guy. I know that was a fight that I won. And uh, he talks a lot. And I just, I was, I was the, I think I was the main guy doing all these memes from, from the, from these guys dancing. And come on, that, that question was for me. Hey, what's up with those I say, yeah, come on, bro. You don't know, like, where, where you at? Like, just a little. I don't, I don't even know Ben Askren to say something bad about him. I don't know him personally, but the character as a fighting that he does, I'm not a fan so much. Like, I just wanna. He's one of the type of guys that if he's still competing, that'll be one of my picks for sure. I would, I would love to compete against Ben Askren. He's not competing. I just have a little fun with it. I know he likes you. Why not? There you go. You saw an opportunity, you just took it, right? One hundred percent. Every opportunity that I see, I would do something. So let's talk about what's going on with you these days, because we had spoken around a month or so ago after the Damian Maya fight. First off, you, you fought on the last event before everything got postponed and temporarily shut down. Do you think about it like, man, if I was booked to fight a week later, who knows where things would be, you know? I was very blessed, very, very lucky, very, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe, but I'm very happy, especially with the big fight that I had, the performance that I had. That was the first event with the closing door. <sighs> crazy, crazy. I, I told you I got way more, way more nervous than, than usually because no crowd, no nothing. And uh, yeah, but I'm still very happy and very glad that I performed. That was the last event that we had. And uh, yeah, I'm blessed. And Wow, if it was one week after a couple, I would be nuts right now because 
I know a lot of guys like to fight. You know, they love to compete. But I think I'm one of the top five, top three guys that love to compete. You know, I love to compete. Like, I've been talking to a couple uh, uh, grappling tournaments that they, they already want to do the super fights. I already put my name in there. I know, I think it's going to be a little hard to get an MMA fight right now. They're going to they're gonna have that one May 9. I think we, I mean, we don't know for sure. We hope they have the May 9 show. And... Things start to get him back after after May, but I just love to compete, and I'm glad that I that I, I had the chance to to compete. And bro, if I didn't have fought, wow, I'll be peace right now. I training like being crazy. I still training a lot. I still doing like I got the keys for my conditioning coach from IHP. They give me the keys. I can go there, you know, do my workout. The gym's closed, but I still can go there. They they have write down my workout. I get a couple of secret sessions with Henry Hoof, and I have my garage training that I have two guys that, that's coming. They come in almost every day, and we do literally regular schedule. You know, we're still training one day. Yesterday, we'll wrestle. Today, we're going to we grapple a little bit in the morning because we're still going to spar hard at night. So I'm still doing my, my regular schedule, but way different than before. We don't have the full trainer, the full... Uh, we have a lot of killers at the gym. We're not doing a lot of sessions together, but I'm still doing my my best to stay in shape. But wow, I'm I'm glad I just compete, you know. Yeah, and you were ready to fight the next weekend against Tyron Woodley for that London card that didn't end up happening. And a couple of weeks ago, you went on Twitter and said that you got turned down again. And I had reached out and you told me that it was Woodley who turned you down again. So what happened this time around from your perspective? So what happened was the the first time in London, he declined the fight, and then after the the, the event was canceled, after the the, the president gave the speech, and then I canceled. Then he went on social media, and, oh, I accept the fight with Gilbert. That was a lie, and uh, he just asked to get on the the fight for the main nine, this card that 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 that's coming, and. Uh, he declined again. He declined for the April 18th that didn't happen. That's supposed to happen. He said he wants to get on this card. And Shashi with Dana said, the only guy available for you is Gilbert Burns. And they all oh, let me think about it. Boom. He got back after a couple of days. Oh, we don't want to fight Gilbert. And then they have, an, they have one spot for May 9th. And I was already like, okay, I'm not fighting. I still going to train. I still going to help you guys. I still going to get ready. And I heard they have one spot. And Ali called me, say, hey, would you ask for that spot? And Sean says, just you available. Just you, you're the only guy that, that's going to be available to fight. On like, on the top six, on the top five, you're the only guy. And uh, he did the same thing again. Oh, give me a couple of days to think about it and blah, blah, blah. That was when I, I tweeted out. I said, yeah, tomorrow we will know. And I was hoping he said yes, but guess what? Yeah, we're not interested in fighting Gilbert right now. But... <laughs> I'm okay with guys declining fight. Like sometimes they like he is he's the guy that I respect a lot because he reached out to me. Hey, I want to fight you. I say let's do it. He say I'm not training, bro. Like it's no way I'm gonna fight you right now. I don't have my training partners, and I'm okay. No problem. I know I get it. You know I understand. But the guy that lied to his fans, hey, I'm fighting. I'm a killer mode. I'm I fight. And no, you're not. You're picking and choose fights. And I used to, I lost all the respect that I had to Tyron Woodley. I had a lot of respect to the guy who used to be the champion, former champion. He had, he had two title defense that wasn't, it was not fun at all. It was ugly fight. But the way he beat Darren Till, the way he beat Robbie Lawler, like, come on, we got to respect the guy. But then he's, he lost, he just did one fight in a year. If you take a look, he just fight one time a year. Then he lost. After that, he just, not fighting anymore and then come on the guy comes and say hey please give me a title fight for my birthday come on bro and I, after that i was like man that guy is playing around give me a title shot for my birthday come on mike that's that's crazy and then i was like man no respect for this guy anymore and I, i'm done i'm done calling him out i'm done you have seen know that i'm available if we don't know right now like a lot of people are not training they kind of Forced into training, working hard to 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 keep in shape. 
let's say someone pulls out the fight, one fight is off from the main line. Let's just suppose I'm I the UFC knows that I'm ready to fight. Maybe if I don't want to fight, maybe not. I'm done calling this guy out. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna beat everybody that they put in front of me. Eventually, I'm gonna fight Adam Wood. I believe that we're gonna fight, but I'm just done calling these guys out. If you wanna fight, we fight. Leon Edwards, Warner Boy. I'm just gonna give one big call out. If any one of these top five guys wants to fight, I'm available. If not, I'm gonna keep fighting. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. If I need to have the, the if I need to do the hard path of beating the number eight, then the number ten, then the number seven, then you know I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna keep doing, it and eventually I'm gonna beat these guys. And harder to Woodley because guess what? He just turned 38. If I'm not wrong, 37, 38. If keep it ducking everybody, one more year, 39, one more year, 40. Okay, like I fight when you're 40. I don't, I don't mind. I rather fight you right now. Then fight when you have 40. Then you're gonna, oh, I was old. I was not in my prime. I rather fight these guys right now. I feel like you're the wild card at 170 pounds right now because I'm not gonna tell you who it was, but I've talked to like two or three different fighters. We were talking about different things. They're like, yeah, I want to fight on one of these cards. Like I'm ready. Like COVID be darned. Like I'm, I'm, I want to fight. And I'm like, well, what, what about if Gilbert Burns is offered to you? Because you know that guy wants to fight. And they're like, eh, I'm not really sure because that, you know, I, I need to like train for that guy. Like all due respect, like nothing but praise for you, but they feel like with the surge you're on, they need like an actual training camp to fight you. Does that make you feel any better about it? Or is it still kind of frustrating because you're having a hard time landing a fight right now? Uh, I'm, I'm learning to control all my ego, you know, like to, 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 to don't let my ego get out of control and, and self-control, you know, I'm trying to have a lot of that. If my ego is still having a, a bigger piece on me, my ego will be so happy with that, like, yeah, they don't want to fight me. But now having more self-control, being more aware of the situation is frustrating because I want to fight, I want to compete, I want to get better. And like, like the only way that that I want to compete a lot is because I know I'm going to improve. You know, I know I'm going to improve as a competition. That's how I saw, I saw Jiu-Jitsu 12 years old. That's how I start training. And after one month, after one month, I don't even know what jiu-jitsu was. I just, I don't even know the moves yet. One month, I did my first competition. Two months, I did my second competition. Three months, I did my third competition. And I never stopped competing. And that's how I got better in jiu-jitsu. It's not just going to the gym, training, training hard. No, it's training hard plus competing. And that's the only way I know to get better. And I get frustrated when the guys, oh, yeah, he's tough. Oh, for him, you need more. Why for me, you need more, you know? Like, for everybody, you need to be on your 100%. Like, for me, to be any type of guy on the top 10 or top 15, I need to be 100%. And to be 100% is more me. It, it, it's a fight against me. It's not a competition against me. It's a lot of things that I need to, that I need to don't do it. And a lot of things, a lot of things that I got to do it in order to be 100%. But that's on me. That's, that don't depend on my coach. It don't depend on nobody. No, my training partners, that depends on me. I need to, that will to, to prepare needs to be big, that, that, that will to win. And, and I have that. And I, I get frustrated. I know I'm on a great spot right now, number six in the welterweight division. For my ego, nice, great. The status, the status is nice being a top six. But Rio Gilbert, the hungry Freaking guy that loves to compete. Um, man, I, sometimes I wish I wasn't on the ranking because I'll be fighting Nico Price. That I know that guy wants to fight. I'll be fighting anyone. I'll be fighting, you know. But I'm on the top six, and then they say no. I say I fight anyone. They say no, you're in the top six. I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna give you a guy that not not on the ranking now. Like wow. And I know uh, a couple guys out there that you want to fight, like Nico Price. I love this guy, and I know he loves to compete. He don't. You don't give a damn to you. If you throw my name, he say, yeah, I fight Gilbert right now. I don't know. Tony Martin is one of the guys that I fight Gilbert. I don't care. But they're not on the ranking. And then i like, man, I get more frustrated that I kind of earned a position to get a ranking guy. And everyone that is ranked, they're you not know, ready. Or they, I don't know, the, the, the couple of excuse, couple of guys they respect. But a couple of guys, they, I don't know. They just kind of, I, I have a miniature from Woodley. They, he just... Is that that Dana White stopping looking like that and Drake, you know, that one that you want to fight and be champion again? Say, no, 
you want to stay rapping, be a number one contender? Yeah. So that's all these guys want. You know, they, they just want to save the spot. That I don't like that. How do you kind of balance? Because, I mean, eventually you just got to get to a point where you're just like, oh, my God, like I have to fight. Hey, buddy, what's going on? What's up? What's going on? Yeah. Usually that happens to me. Usually my kid comes in during my interviews and yeah. that happens all the time. But it's nice to see it happen on the other end. But how do you sort of balance like the competitor Gilbert Burns who just wants to fight all the time to the guy who has sort of earned that spot? Like you're in the top six now. You want to fight guys that are ahead of you. You want to get to that belt. But eventually, do you think there's going to be a breaking point where you're just like, oh, I don't care about the rankings anymore. I just want to fight somebody. I think we will. If you keep going like that, if I don't get a fight, like Willie don't want to fight, these guys don't want to fight, these guys just... Be honest, let's, let's put the names. Tyron Willie don't want to fight. Why he? If I, have, if I had an opponent before, called Leon White, the guy that's coming on a lot, of, a lot of wins. Total respect to the guy. And Tyron Willie was scheduled to fight the guy. They just don't fight because of the, the whole corona thing. Come on, now you oh now I don't want to fight this guy anymore. I was fighting this guy. Come on, bro. You you signed the contract. You supposed honor with that. So now he don't want to fight uh uh Leon Wardridge. And Colby wanna get an easy fight to get a not easy fight, but he wants to get a one fight to fight for the title again. Leon Wardle is still wanna fight Woodley, so I kind of, I want to fight Woodley, I want to fight Kobe, I want to fight Leon Wilders, but I got it because Leon Wilders, he deserves to fight Woodley. And I don't want to, I, I, I like, I fight you if you don't fight Woodley, I fight you, but I, okay, you fight Woodley. And then who have, who we have that Wonder Boy? Hands are broken, nice guy. Fuck, I call this guy, I fight, I fight Wonder Boy too, but I think it's going to get to a point that all that coronavirus need to be done. And I think. If uh, Wonder Boy, Edwards, uh, Kobe, or Woody don't give him an opportunity, I want I need to fight Kiesa. After let's say all scenario goes good, I beat Kiesa. Woodley, those guys keep stalling the division. I'm gonna freaking fight Josh Neal. And let's say I beat Josh Neal. Let's for sure a lot of respect to these guys. I'm just putting in a scenario, best scenario. Okay, I beat these two guys, and they. They gotta fight me now after those. Maybe I gotta do two more fights to beat these guys just to I don't know because they are you you who the 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 skills are this guy is irrelevant. He just got here. Okay, let me beat a couple more guys. And and I just beat the guy that you make an ugly fight. I just finished the guy on the first round, a legend. That you guys just make all the rounds and finish the guy the one less than one round. So I don't know. I get frustrated sometimes, but I I try to I try to use that time to improve to get better, but I uh, I still hungry, bro. Like sometimes I feel that I didn't compete, that I didn't fought this year yet. I think, and uh, and that makes me hungry. And then I'm, I don't know. I'm just gonna put all my energy on my training, on improve, on get better. And it's gonna be like a pit bull, you know, like a pit bull when he's hungry, when he goes to a fight, he's gonna be on the on the cage as soon as you. You let the people go, that, that's going to be me, like, hungry and going forward to the fights and can't wait to, to my next fight to, to show these guys how, how good I am, how, how good I'm getting, how bad I'm getting right now, you know. And sometimes it's frustrating, but I'm going to control that and I'm going to put all my energy on my training and, and get better. So if you had a guess, do you think your next competitive event will be grappling or MMA? What do you think is going to come first? I think it's going to be grappling. I, don't, I just heard the, the floor grappling. I have a great relationship with the guys from floor grappling. I heard they they going to do an event uh, with the closing doors very soon. And I just put my name. Oh, if you guys do it, I better be on that. I better be on that one, you know, because I'm not on the May 9th. They, they, there's a rumors from May 16th, but we don't know. But I part of my MMA preparation is a lot of grappling, so I'll be grappling anyway. So, but if I have to guess, Mike, I I guess I'm gonna grappling before I fight him. I fight I fight in the UFC again. How are you enjoying uh, the extra family time with the quarantine? Because I know my kids around all the time. His school's off for the rest of the year. How are you enjoying it? How are you enjoying? Tell me the truth. <laughs> You know, some days are better than others, Gilbert. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, it's, it, it has been good to just, like, 
I'll work and I'll take five, you know, a few minutes to go downstairs and hang out with them. And once like I have a break in between, we'll run outside for a while. So it is nice having them there all the time. But, you know, I think you know what I'm saying. Once in a while, you need a little bit of free there. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth. I miss my training. I miss, you know, my, my training partners. I, be, I miss fighting, go to the UFC, watch the I miss that. But what I miss the most is the school, bro. Is the kids' school, bro. Like, I love my kids. Best thing that I have in my life right now, my family, my kids, and my wife. But wow. 24 hours with the kids, 24 7. Wow. It's too much, bro. I'm, and we're doing a lot. We're fishing, we're training, we're running, we're biking, we're basketball, we trampoline, we go everywhere. We're doing everything, all type of games. But wow, I miss the school so much, bro. Like, you love my family, but wow, when you, we need a little break of each other. Sometimes I just, all right, let me just go on Home Depot, just, <laughs> just to get out a little bit. You know, give a little walk by myself just because it's been rough. Like, I love to save the family, but sometimes we need that little break. You know, school is perfect. Eight to two, no kids. Then kids come back. We, we miss the kids a little bit. We play more and go to training and come back. I miss the routine, to be honest. I miss my routine, you know. Yeah. Big shout out to all the teachers out there because yes. I've always, always put you on a pedestal, but now you're on like the biggest pedestal after all yes. this time, you know. I said I said a lot of a lot of presents are waiting for the for the teachers they deserve to go. Wow. My kids are trouble, bro. Like wow. <laughs> so when you're when you're not training or hanging with or even when you're hanging with the family, or you know, if you're not creating Twitter videos that are making everybody happy, what else are you doing? Is there like any shows you're binge watching? You reading any books? Like what other things are you doing with this extra time? Bro, I miss reading the books. I, I get three books that I gather that I gather. Read, you start reading, did you start yet? Yeah, I promise to start this week. I'm 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 done with the books. I gotta go back to the book real quick. We're just watching Netflix. We start watching the Fowler. She Fowler, that's how he said the the the, the, the police one, the police one on Netflix called Fowler. We're watching this one and uh I was just playing a lot of video games with the kids, like Fortnite, Call of Duty, and uh fishing. I think that was what I'm most doing, video game. Fishing, uh, Netflix. I watch a lot of fights. Yeah, but with the family, more Netflix. Fishing, we're fishing a lot. That's the first time that we really, I think I got a lot better on fishing. My ability to fish is better. And overall, playing 100% with the kids. I, and I like it because they, they have a lot of energy. So we run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post a little video. They do yesterday. We, they, they play TikTok. They, they, they love TikTok. They love all, and they saw. Uh, Anthony Pettis, uh, Showtime kick, the, the kick that he gave on uh, Ben Henderson, they both did. Perfect. They both, my both kids, Pedro and Joshua, they both did the kick. You got to post this one. They they have a lot of energy. They were practicing the kick, like drilling over and over. And, and I was getting tired just to hold the pads, and they do it. So I like it because they have a lot of energy, and they're so athletic. They, anything they do, they do with a lot of energy, with a lot of will. So I, I just have to... I'm I'm having a lot of fun with the kids as well, but sometimes it's a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be the guy all, all positive, oh super nice. No, bro. Is it be super hard sometimes? Keeping it real. We're keeping it real on the show. Uh, it, I, I wanna let you get back to the family, man. Always a always a pleasure. I think I speak for a lot of people, Gilbert, when I say kudos to you for trying to put smiles on our faces during these uncertain times in the world. All the best to you and the family. Hope you can get back in there sooner rather than later. Thanks, Gilbert. Always a pleasure catching up with you, man. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that time with you too, bro. Take it easy to the family.